Hello, my beautiful Virgos. Welcome back to Queen Cup Tarot. I am just smudging and shuffling and whatnot, getting ready to do your May 2019 tarot readings. Um, for those that are new, welcome. Please like, share, subscribe. <laughs> for those that are returning, thank you so much. Um, Virgo gang, you really know how to show our kids some love, so thank you. Um, for engaging the channel, for reaching out to me, for booking personal readings with me. I still feel you guys. I hope you guys are well. I'm sending you my love and light. Um, whether you booked with me or not, I'm always sending you guys my love and light. As you guys know, I'm empathic, so I can feel you um, for good or for bad. And the positive energy has trumped any negative energy I've gotten. So thank you so much, guys, for your prayers and well wishes and all of that. And, and uh, definitely thank you for sticking with the channel even though I have uh, not been as consistent as I've wanted or have promised I would be but I'm working on it so smooches <laughs> um so yeah I'm gonna do any kind of like special announcements and stuff or shout outs at the end if I remember because some of them I've forgotten to um just because like the, the the time in between me meditating prior to the recording and then getting on the recording and doing the actual readings too long. Um, but I did want to make mention to uh, my frankincense supplier as well as um, my mom is doing something really cool for charity. So I promised her I would um, shout her out on the channel, see if I could get some of the subbies to support her. Um, so yeah, I'll talk more about that at the end of the video if I remember to. If not, all the details, whether you want a personal reading, you can email me at queencuptair at gmail.com um, or any of the ways you can connect with me is below. And uh, and yeah, also about my frankincense supplier and a little bit about what my mom's doing, you can check in the description, okay? All right, guys, I think I'm ready to go into prayer. Um, for those that timestamp, thank you so much uh, for your due diligence and timestamping prior to the prayer. My readings can be a little bit long, so thanks for breaking it down um, so that people can watch, you know, or refer back and have that. Anyway, thank you. All right, guys, Virgo gang. Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors and guardian angels, thank you for rising me up out of my bed this morning and thank you for connecting me with the collective every day. Right now in particular, I ask you to connect me with the collective of Virgo and allow me to communicate to them the messages that are in their greatest good, surrounding their material abundance, sustenance, the relationships closest to them, their personal ascension and development, and any other messages you deem worthy at this time. Thank you, Father, Holy Spirit, ancestors and guardian angels for all your conditional, unconditional love, support, and guidance, protection. We are absolutely nothing without it, and we are absolutely nothing without you. Thank you. All right, guys. Gonna do a nine card spread. All right, guys, let's see what the energies are for me, for Virgo gang, the overall energies. Are, you guys know your main card spread is upright. Um, the Queen of Wands. Some of my Virgos are feeling an, an, an increase in self-confidence. Something could have happened, something could have been achieved. Your perspective could have changed somehow, but there is the sense of this being a little bit new for some of my Virgos, maybe being a little bit more extroverted than usual. Um, if, if some of the wa my Virgos watching are typically a bit more introverted, not that you're um, antisocial or in any means, but it's just like this is a little bit more of... Um, front page energy it's also intuition spirituality as you can see around her head it's almost like light it's like it's indicating like the, these chakras being open vibrating um and some of the downloads that you're getting might just be um more realistic better um the downloads that you're receiving are allowing for a healthier internal mental dialogue 
which therefore translates into feeling better, feeling more confident. This is wands are also actions. So some of you might have been in more of a hermit mode, uh, being the card of Virgo, where you're just doing a lot of self-reflection, looking inwards, maybe reevaluating wants, needs, um, repositioning. And then this card would indicate the action that was then taken um, or is being taken or uh, the courage is being developed in order to take. Okay. I know that was a mouthful. Um, all right. More action. Okay. So first card out of your nine card spread is the seven of wands. Um, that's needing to stand your ground, kind of backing people off you. Maybe these could be people having to stand your ground against people, but this could also be standing. It, it, it's, it's, it's the, these opinions and ideas being pressed upon you and having to get people to back off of you. Like, it's like, no, 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 no. I, I have chosen a certain path for myself and it doesn't necessarily have to be aggressive. It could just be like, people are coming to you trying to change your mind about something you've made clear. You're really sure about. Okay. Um, your second card out is the queen of swords, um, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini energy, um, whether male or female, but the queen of swords is, I mean, there's so many different ways to talk about this queen of swords, but me as a reader, I see this queen of swords as being someone who isn't feral, like, cause I look at the, the court cards as maturity. That's why it's whether, whether, whether male or female. And I think for all of us, we're all trying to acquire the four kings. Now, in swords being governing communications and thoughts, at this level of maturity, it's almost like you've gotten a really good handle on how to cut out the bullshit, but there is a sense of haste where I feel like one of the biggest maturity differences between the queen and the king is, is that the king makes decisions from a more grounded place, meaning we'll take more time, we'll not be pressured into making those decisions quickly, where for the queen, for example, if addressed with any pressure, we'll say, well, based on the facts that I have at this point, this is my response. Not using any kind of emotion, if feels any pressure, will act, where the king will not act under any pressure in order to make a decision. It's like knowing that having that strength to push back when needed, when it comes to making decisions that are in your best interest or, you know, cutting out what doesn't serve you per se. It's like this energy is also quite cold and emotionally detached um, when making when making decisions or when communicating. Um, doesn't mean that this energy doesn't have emotions. It's just not usually transparent in the way they communicate. It might be more emotions might be easier, easy, easier, easy, better expressed through things like, uh, physical, um, action or, uh, gestures or things like that. Okay. Third card out, you've got the King of Cups, you know. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio energy, but this is also um, at this level of maturity. It's it's almost like this queen knows that she has to level up in a certain area. So for me, what I'm seeing here very clearly is some of my Virgos might be struggling with communicating clearly how it is they're feeling. And instead of, because they're unable to communicate that clearly and they're holding back certain things, they're now becoming passive aggressive and um, maybe uh, short, uh, maybe cold, aloof, detached. And there's this sense of like pushing people away or pushing somebody away and not expressing to them why you don't want them around or why you're looking to detach or why you're feeling detached or why you're treating them so cold. This could also be vice versa, guys, okay? 
Um, if, if Virgo, you're experiencing this detached, cold behavior from someone and you're trying to get them to explain to you certain things, um, maybe you instinctually know there's something wrong. Um, and like, as you can see here, the King of Cups is looking away with a bit of a smirk, almost intentionally not expressing emotions, like on purpose. And all that's doing is creating you, or if this is you, creating the other person to emotionally shut down and push you away. Um, it's, it's, it's be careful of this because this could really cause a big, you know, separation or gap if they continue to be that way. Um, but really it, it's, uh, if it's, if this is someone treating you this way, Virgo, and being cold and not expressing things to you about how they feel, um, your response to that might then be to either take one, one perspective, <coughs> excuse me, one perspective, either you're going to start attacking them with questions and, you know, what's this and what's this and what's the problem and da, 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 da. And all it looks like they'll probably do is push you away further, or you'll take this stance and end up pushing them away. And maybe anybody else who asks you any questions about them or what's going on or whatever the case is. And this doesn't have to be a romantic partnership, but I am getting the sense of partnership with the queen and a king outside, um, right, right off of the hop. Okay. Fourth card out, Virgo, six of swords, beautiful, um, travel, you know, um, I'm also seeing here somebody expressing that they want to leave a commitment, um, and the other person not, the other person isn't trying to hear that. Like I said, with this king of cups looking the other way, like isn't trying to hear that. Um, and it's like you, you, you're, you had to take a certain stance or do something in order to get the point across um, about how serious it is that you want to end or cut out a certain um, committed relationship. Now, the fourth card out being the Six of Swords, so wanting to cut that commitment out and move away. Um, this is also moving away from this conflict or this imbalance that's happening um, maybe between two people. This is also requiring a level of emotional maturity to detach yourself from things in order to move forward. So if this is a job in another state, city, country, whatever, you're going to have to detach, be emotionally mature enough to detach yourself from what is familiar to you and move in to a territory that is not. So there's a sense of vulnerability I'm getting from the Six of, card, six of Swords card um, that I don't usually get. Um, so yeah. Sorry, I know the frankincense is dying out. Gotta, gotta get some more in the burn, guys. Burning the good stuff for you. Shout out Yasmin. Details below. She's out in Toronto here with me, guys. Her frankincense is bomb. Like, it's not even a game. Like, this is just one of the kinds. Black frankincense. You've seen that? Yeah, probably not. Yeah, it's not a game. I'm funny with my frankincense. I take my frankincense very seriously. Okay. I hadn't been burning it for a while. I didn't realize that I hadn't been burning it and then burnt it and was like, whoa, thank you, Jesus. All right. Um... Okay, that's good. Needed to get some more on the... Yeah. I like when you can see my little shit in the side. <laughs> Create the scene. All right. Okay, okay, okay. In the middle of your spread, general, please. Wow, a final decision, a judgment. Some of my Virgos are making a very big shift in order to resurrect a relationship. Some of you are making a final decision regarding a partnership. In this book, there's two people. And I see also two people. 
uh, Libra full moons, back to back full moons that occurred this year, put a huge emphasis on the collective energetically surrounding partnerships, whether platonic, nucleus family, you know, romantic, and how we position ourselves in them uh, in order to be beneficial, ma maximize the benefit um, that that comes to both people involved. You know, if it's a business related partnerships, you're really honing in on the ability to be able to nurture that ship, that relationship in a way where if you build a business, it has longevity, you know, not just from, you know, a, a business plan standpoint, but a, a, a partnership management standpoint, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, making a final decision to move away or towards something and really standing your ground against anybody that's kind of telling you otherwise, right? So if you're maybe deciding to make a career move and you've been working in a career at a company for a while and you go to people and you kind of talk about it, you might be getting the response of, oh, that's really rash or, oh, you might really want to think twice about doing that, which is always insulting because you usually would have thought twice about it before even bringing it to your friends or family. So it's that doubting energy um, that I see some of my Virgos may be dealing with um, when it comes to talking about anything to do with this move or this final judgment. The Six of Swords is also plane, train, and automobile actual travel, like actual factual travel, okay? Now your sixth card out, guys. Oh, I didn't want to show you the bottom of the spread. Oh, I did show you the bottom of the spread. Anyway, I'm going to do The Three of Swords. So... This three of swords here, it looks like someone's someone's purposely, this is not an inability to communicate emotions. No, 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 no. The king of cups is extremely capable, just as capable as the queen. The difference is, is the, the king of cups is more strategic and controlled. Now, the shadow side of that is there could be the sense of manipulation when it comes to emotions. And I'm getting that energy the way this king and queen are sitting with each other and he's looking away with that smirk. So I feel like for some of my Virgos, either you or someone around you, regardless of the nature of this relationship, someone is holding back how they truly feel. Now what they could be holding back might not be sinister. They could be holding back that they're hurt about something, something that they decided to do or will decide to do or have without your, your, your consult. Um, some of you might feel really heartbroken about somebody not expressing to you some, de uh, some decisions that they make, some decisions you make that you don't, that you're not expressing. Um, some of you are not, haven't told somebody yet that you need to move away or that you're moving away or that maybe you've been thinking about leaving a relationship. Why? Because you don't want to cause heartbreak, even though, quite frankly, I think that for some of my Virgos, you don't think this person has much of a heart anyway, just from an emotional standpoint, not that they're not a good person. It's just that they're not like emotionally like connective, um, you know, whether male or female and, and, you know, but still not wanting to hurt them, not wanting to cause heartbreak. Um, but making a final decision that heartbreak is something you need to move away from. And it's probably because you have vision of something better. Um, if you've been experiencing some hard times in, in and around where you live, um, you might really decide to move away um, from, from there just because you're feeling attacked by the people around you, because this could be community, this could be nucleus family, friends, whatever. This could be one person coming at you from all these different angles and you're needing to say, hold the fuck up, right? So just think of that energy of just being a little bit bombarded and then getting your defenses up, feeling you need to defend yourself just for the simple fact that it's just too much at one time coming at you, right? Um, sorry guys, I have to put this down. Um, next card out, you've got the page of cups. So someone's making a decision to apologize and it's probably, this is, this, this apology that I'm seeing in this message is, uh, is not somebody close to you. So you probably won't see it coming. Um, it may be now, if I say like, it's been a long time coming, you may say, hmm, there's somebody who did hurt me that you 
probably think might want to come back, but I don't know if it is that person, but it is somebody coming from a distance, whether it's a distance of time or a distance of space in order to mend something, either this, this apology, this apology could have intention, meaning they want to relieve their heartbreak in hopeful in hopes of maybe a reconciliation or something like that but this could also be them wanting to apologize because they're aware of how the energy they, this kind of energy that they brought to you right making a final decision to either resurrect the situation or just maybe making you know the final judgment call that this is probably the best thing to do somebody looks like they want to clear up a little bit of karma express some emotions that haven't been expressed before um, some of my Virgos might say, oh, you were hurt. Oh, please. Kind of energy. Don't do that. Um, don't do that. It, it's not going to get you anywhere. Um, the sun right after the page of cups. So not only does this apology and this communication of emotions bring in happiness, it brings in, it brings in clarity that brings in a certain level of peace and contentment. It's kind of like, oh, that makes me feel a lot better to know that. Or, oh, that was really, really nice. Like, damn, that, that kind of clarity brings me contempt. So that's wonderful. Um, but like I said, I don't know how long this journey is. I don't know where they're at. But if you look, that's a pretty long, where they're going, that little hump of land all the way over, that's a long journey. There's two people in the boat. So for some of you, um, it would be two, the energies of two people coming towards you. Or maybe you're moving into a new space with someone, in agreement with someone, that it's best for us to move into a new space because we've maybe experienced too much here, or maybe there was some clarity with regards to some of the heartbreak we experienced really had to do with our environment. You know, maybe the you and somebody, or maybe even just yourself, are realizing that your environment is quite toxic and it's bringing you, and that could mean a lot of things. Like, keep in mind, a toxic environment for you might not feel like a toxic environment for somebody else. So you need to determine what that toxicity looks like for you. But it looks like a change in that whether somebody comes with you or not. It's like it's kind of getting full awareness of what this heartbreak looked like and what was stemmed from it. It's not just, you know, the things people said to you. It was the thoughts that came from certain things you were exposed to, you know certain where it's, it's that energy of like only here would they have you know this or only here would this be right your environment might be hurting you or negatively impacting you and some of my virgos are realizing that and it might have started with the awareness of a toxic person and then it spread it out spread out into being a little bit more aware about how that spreads or what the umbrella of that is or ultimately understanding what kind of toxicity you're naturally drawn to and why you're drawn to it what about it makes it so familiar and comfortable or even enticing right. last card out is the four of swords um, some of you are going to have a conversation, a very heavy conversation with someone. Um, I think it's going to be very, very intense in emotion and exchange. Some of the words that are communicated could be a bit heavy, but I'm more seeing, um, apologetic, clear, apologetic and vulnerable communication. So whether there's an actual story, the energy is apologetic. It's wanting to reestablish a friendship or it's coming. It's the energies of somebody who is really being a friend, which is genuine, right? They, somebody is trying to bring you in some kind of clarity after heartbreak because right under the three of swords is the four of swords. So it does look like somebody who really hurt you does bring in a certain level of healing to you or you to them. It's quite beautiful energy, guys. Um, you know, whether you decide to uh, move forward with them or not, 
just the simple fact that this healing comes in is really beautiful but let's get some clarification and like i said at the bottom of the spread is the queen of wands so definitely either if it's not you this person being ready and confident enough to take this action or at the very least get in this boat and make a move you know okay some people are still some people that some of the people that are resonating with this are at a stage where they're still deliberating if this action is something that they want to take or in their best interest. It's almost like deciding this brought them to this level of confidence, but now it's time to pull the trigger. They're, just, they're like, okay, no, I really need to decide if this action isn't my best interest. Or this could be deciding which way I'm going to go about reconnecting with somebody or which way am I going to go about having this conversation, taking the thoughts practically into the 3D. You know, how do I bring all of this internal dialogue into an actual practical conversation and then juggling the ways of how you could do that? Okay. Um, all right, let's get some clarification. We're going to use the new era elements tarot for clarification. I'll show you guys your spread as usual. You guys can see. So, first, you've got the Seven of Wands the Queen of Swords, the King of Cups. Then you have the Six of Swords, Judgment, and the Three of Swords. Then you have the Page of Cups, the Sun, and the Four of Swords. Okay. That's Leo Energy. Fuck, I'm not, I'm not really good at this, guys. Um, I'm going to get better for you, I promise. I don't remember what the judgment is. Can somebody tell me? Is it um? Is it, somebody write these, guys, because you guys know I'm not good with them. <coughs> It'd be good if you guys put in the comments what these cards are, if I remember to show you. So there, we've got the judgment, which I don't remember. I know this is air energy, um, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, uh, water energy, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, more air, more air, more air, more water. Then you have fire, Sagittarius, Leo, um, uh, Aries. And then you've got the sun, huge Leo energy, and then more fire energy here with the Queen of Wands. But this would be... Um, uh, Water and fire. Queen of Wands is water and fire. I'm pretty sure. Either water and fire or earth and fire. I mean, no. Yeah, yeah. Shit. Anyway. Okay. Let me shuffle up. I get some clarification from you guys. I, you guys know I don't like when I cut off my forehead because then if I do, it looks so big. <sighs> Whatever. Thank you, Father God, Holy Spirit, ancestors, and guardian angels for this beautiful spread for the collective of, collective of Virgo. Can we get clarification on this Seven of Wands, this Queen of Swords, and this King of Cups? <coughs> <coughs> I just saw the Two of Cups. Yeah, partnerships being the highlight for everyone, really. It's not. People are like, well, you might think, oh, my friend's not... Yeah, but they might be at work working with a partner at work to finish a project and that's been their focus And they've learned a lot about how they move in partnerships dealing with this colleague Broaden out your understanding of partnerships everyone runs to romance But you can gain a lot of knowledge about how you function in relationships Romantically if you look at how you function in all your relationships because different relationships touch different emotional parts of you so if you really want to get a full understanding of how you present yourself, you know, and how you partner with people, look at all natures of relationships and then put them together. You know, you might have skills that you're using in your relationship with your nucleus family that you could be applying to your romantic, romantic relationship that could help. Whether it's like needing to, you know, whatever. Mind you, it could also be the negative. Right, some toxic behaviors you partake in with your nucleus family that you then bring into a romantic partnership, and now that's a problem that they didn't have that you have. It's all yours. Yep, this is normal to you, not them. Kind of energy, right? All right. Before it's your
And for those that come at me about getting at my dog, guys, you see like a snippet into my life, okay? I'm not here cursing my dog out all day, every day. My dog is my road dog. So don't talk about, don't, unless you have nice things to say about my animal, like don't talk about my animal. That's God's dog right there, okay? And to all the people that channel messages to and for her, thank you so much, okay? And I will stop yelling at Thora, but she yells at me too. Okay, like, you just don't see it. <laughs> okay, she will yell and she will bark at me and she will try to put me in my place, but um, yeah, that's God's dog. <laughs> she's sipping from outside, so she's napping. All right, let's see what we got. As soon as I said that, Ace of Earth. So a lot of my Virgos are standing their ground that they are absolutely ready or excited about embarking in a new opportunity. One that I think um, I'm getting the energies that someone isn't being on board about or trying to fight or, you know, there's, there's some arguing or some conflict or there's some need to defend yourself around this new opportunity. Now, maybe this new opportunity was presented to a group of people and it's like you're feeling like it's like who gets it first. And it looks like people are taking different approaches on how to acquire this new practical opportunity, abundant. This has the potential of being extremely abundant and have a lot of longevity. Um, not always, not necessarily. I've pulled the Ace of Earth and not have longevity from the opportunities of it, but it did have the potential of it. It was just what I changed my mind and wanted to do with it after, right? So either way, um, the Ace of Pentacles being a great card. So if, if some people, um, like I said, uh, if you're in a relationship, a committed relationship, there's a possibility that you're a uh, person, if this isn't you, is privately plotting this new opportunity and not explaining to you what their plans are, okay? You might be instinctually feeling it and detaching yourself emotionally because you feel this person's energy kind of leaving you or you feel this person is plotting. Address it. It might not be as sinister as bad as you're thinking, because the Queen of Swords will think of the worst possible. She'll hope for the best, but she'll really be prepared for the worst. And the only way you can be prepared for the worst is if you've gone through all like those probabilities in your head. So she can be a bit pessimistic at times. Um, so it's, it's, anyway, let's see what else we get. Um, wow. An ace, uh, this, this is, for some of my Virgos, they believe this new opportunity that they're, that they're really determined and more, more than determined, they're being protective of, whether energetically or physically or whatever. Um, there's a sense of my Virgos feeling like there's a certain level of stability and, and Virgos really appreciating stability whether it's in finances or in whatever, mostly it's in material abundance, but I mean, stability is prime for you. There's a sense of status quo and calm that makes you really good. And if you don't have it, you can get a little bit fucked up about, not that you don't have this passion and this sense of blowing out the boundaries, but it's, it's like, for a lot of my Virgos, they're they're standing their ground so rigorously against something because quite simply, they believe it's, the perfect opportunity for them. If you believe you have an opportunity that's perfect for you, don't be afraid. Don't be so defensive. You don't need to defend yourself so hard because there's, there's no win or loss. It's like, do it. If you feel this way and you're so sure, your instincts are trying to draw you to gain a certain lesson. So say for this example, this falls through, it might really be in order to change your perspective of what perf the perfect opportunity is. Okay, so, but either way, I'm seeing a lot of my Virgos being presented with an opportunity that they almost can't resist. And, or, or go towards somebody with an opportunity that is so stable in offer that 
you, you're almost, that's kind of what's bringing, that's kind of what's leading this queen of wands energy. It's like knowing that like, I won't even feel bad if this person doesn't take this because then that must all be about them. Like there's a sense of surety knowing that what you have to offer is super stable. Okay. Really good energies guys. Now let's clarify the six of swords, the judgment and the three of swords. Uh, defeat and judgment again. Okay. Um, moving away from, this is not the, the greatest energy. This is like, this is, it, this is being a winner, but not winning anything. You're winning at the expense of someone. Okay. And that energy, that kind of competitive energy gets nasty and it gets nasty quick and people start to lose. Like it's, it can be quite detrimental. Right. So it's like, it's like really making a decision that that's not how you want to play anymore. Making a decision or, or coming to an understanding, a final understanding, because you look at yourself in the mirror and you realize that you've caused a lot more damage to yourself playing this game than you haven't won anything. You know what I mean? And it's like making a decision to move away from this type of energy. Why? Because it caused a lot of heartbreak in the past and you know it will continue in the future if you continue to play this game because there's other lotuses on this web and they're stuck they're going to get wrapped up just like this one too so it's like it can get worse if you continue to play this game that really has no winner okay all right it's also the energies of somebody trying to compete with you when you're trying to work with them. That sucks. That energy. I can't stand that. Cause then it's like, don't make like, I will fucking not want to work with you anymore. Like don't fucking play with me. Okay. You know what I mean? Like don't try to compete with me when I'm trying to work with you or else I'm not going to want to do nothing with you. <laughs> but the judgment being, um, you know, showing up twice in your reading uh, major arcana in the middle of your spread that is you know holy spirit definitely putting an emphasis on either final decisions okay needing to get this um what's the word it's when you um that indecisive for my virgos that have been a bit struggling with indecisiveness really struggling to be able to make a final decision that they've probably known was in their best interest for a while now, um, are making that final decision. And, um, yeah, some of you though are some of you that have gone through really, really heavy depression in the past couple of months are making, making the final decision to come out of it and, or move away from it you're resurrecting yourself from the dead. Congratulations. Welcome back. We missed you. Um, all right. And then can we get clarification for the page of cups, the sun and the four of swords for my beautiful Virgos? Absolutely gorgeous. It's like what you're moving away from. Okay. Is despair and heartbreak. Whether it was actions, people, places, there's a certain level of heaviness. You made the final decision to move away from. And before you even get to your destination, you're feeling the victory. Before you even get there, at this point, I don't even think you care about where you're going. You're just happy you're getting away from wherever the fuck you were at. And this could just be energy, guys. This doesn't actually have to be physically moving, which it, of course, can, can be. All right. And then, wow, we have the seven of wands again. Being brave about this final decision. These are the two duplicate cards you have in your spread. Being brave about your final decision. Some of you were very brave at looking at yourself in a new way, looking at somebody for who they really were. There was, there was a sense of clarity that you allowed to come in that you might have been purposely blinding yourself and there's a sense of bravery now. And now it's like, 
having a lot more courage and control to make whatever decisions it is and actually back it up whether you have everybody on board or not. Okay, and um, that's really fantastic. And then, <gasps> I'm speechless. <laughs> It's a divine pair and a baby. The king, the queen, the father of fire, the mother of fire, and their baby. Some of you are welcoming a grandchild into the world or will be very soon. Mm. And, um, or just did, congratulations. Some of you um, who don't have children are going to meet the, their divine partner who this child was always meant to come from, um, which I mean, all your children are meant to come from whoever you have children with, just so you know. I believe your birthday is written, so you might as well not cry over nothing. <laughs> but yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Or this is absolutely the joining and the beautiful new beginning between people who will most likely spend the rest of their lives together. Now, if not, the shadow side of this, these were in reverse. You okay? That's a girl. No one's there, so relax. Just calm down. Yes, stretch. In the reversed version, okay, this is meeting somebody just as slutty and emotionally unavailable and unreliable and uncommitted as you, and you having a really quick, passionate beginning with them only for it to crash and burn because this person is exactly like you. And some people narcissistically, they 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 want they don't want somebody like them because they know that it isn't good. There's lots of ways to read this. Yeah, right. Go lay down, Cha Cha. I'm almost done. Go on. Okay, come say hi to the people. They love you. Come here. Come come onto the YouTube. No, get away from there now. Okay, she. <laughs> There's people like. There's a whole show going on over here. Anyway, all right. The father and mother. This is also, if this is not referring to two people, this is somebody completely leveling up when it comes to their ability to take action, how courageous they are. They're doubling up on courage, on bravery, on the ability to take surefire action. Like this is action where there is no turning back it's like you can't hesitate you've got to go and know when to go and then not look back kind of energy and not look back in a not a dramatic way but it's like if you go into a burning building to like extinguish it like you can't like turn back into like are you either going to do this or not because there's other people you know maybe following you in or leading with you or either way but this is increasing this is ascension and that is where this new beginning always was. It was like, we ask for things, but they're here. So if you're here in your ascension, okay, what you're asking for is here at this level of ascension. This is, the, this is where you need to vibrate in order to just be there for it. It's not a matter of being given. It's not a matter of finding it. It's a matter of positioning yourself to be able to receive it. Positioning yourself to be able to see it. I hope that makes sense, guys. Anyway, um, and then we'll use the shaman oracle. Okay. Let's see what card we get here. The shaman oracle for my verbals. For me. Love you guys. Thank you for your support. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And um... 
Wow. Spirit of Truth, which I will read out of the book for you guys, okay? Spirit of Truth. There it is. All right. And this shaman deck is inspired by cave drawings from through from throughout the world, which really, really resonated with me. It's very archaic. Um, okay. <coughs> I am the I am the spirit of truth, the foundation upon which all things are built. I open the way to understanding, to an acceptance of the reality of things as they are. I strip away the veils of self-deception and walk the straight path of honor. I do not turn away from truth, however har harsh it may seem, and my steps are always fulfilled, uh, fueled with purpose and a determination to penetrate to the heart of any matter. The spirit of truth in a primitive world of fundamental instincts and elemental risks, there was little room for sub subterfuge, subterfuge, I don't know, guys, I am borderline illiterate, but like, I'm not, but I am. Um, to survive was to live by limitless truths of body and spirit. In today's world, truth is one of the uh, benchmarks by which we judge ourselves and is a necessary ingredient in the evolution of civilized values. The spirit of truth ennobles us, ennobles us in an aura of integrity. As we walk our chosen path, it helps us to measure our progress accurately, usefully, punctures our self delusions and gives us a true understanding of anyone in root who might offer us false security or seductive rewards. Facing the truth with open eyes, responding to challenges with honesty and truth, belief in the truthfulness of others, and seeing beyond illusions, clear sightedness. Absolutely gorgeous. And then I just want to pull a few romance wrap up your reading with some romance angels. Let's see. For Virgos, this is going on in May to June. Partnership is clearly front of center, or at least just, you know, those underlying energies, but romantically what's going on for Virgos. Religious factors, your love life is influenced by your religious upbringing and spiritual path. When I see that card, it really seems self-explanatory. That's why I don't particularly like it, because I think everyone's love life is and is built on those things, whether it's religion, upbringing, spiritual path. But your spiritual path, it's like, anyway, I don't want to start, like, dissing the cards. Like, so it's like I gave you a card, and that's what you're going to say. <laughs> Maybe it means something to you, but I don't have a message for it. Ooh, I got deception, but I got it in reverse. So I feel like somebody is going to be tapping into their moral compass in order to maybe clear up some deception. Remember, I had um, these cards here, the Page of Cups and the Sun. So somebody bringing in clear communication or an apology that brings in a lot of contentment. Why? Because you can tell it's genuine. You can see through it. Um, you know it's alkaline, right? So I think somebody, uh, there's going to be some purging, healing energies with Virgos and somebody, um, with the, especially with the spirit of truth as well, right? We've got deception in reverse, which I don't really look at them that way, but it came out very much in reverse to me with religious factors, spirit of truth, and then the card of apology, and then the sun, not only being happiness, but the clearest, it's seeing things for the essence of exactly what it is, whether it's communication, actions, whatever. It's knowing exactly what it is and trusting it. Because you can see that the bottom, all right? Guys, oh, and then of course, it's safe for you to love. I know Spirit's telling me this, okay? But I get it in all the readings for you guys too. So I think it's a message that I need to tell you guys it is safe to love, all right? It's actually mandated. It's a part of our creation, our DNA, you know? God would love nothing more than us to just know that it's safe to love and that we are love, okay? I know, I know. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I love each and every single one of you. Thank you for your support. Continue, continue to let your inner angels live. And I will see you guys 
soon. Ciao.